Hello everyone, welcome back. In the previous video, we discussed about the basics of measuring systems and error analysis. In this video, we will be discussing about uh, different types of measuring instruments which are used in electrical systems. So, first, let us see some terms which we will be encountering in the measure measurement systems. So, first one is sensitivity. It is the ratio of magnitude of output signal to the input signal. Sensitivity is the ratio of magnitude of output signal to the input signal and deflection factor is the inverse of sensitivity so let us see one problem um, a wheatstone bridge requires a change of 7 ohms in the unknown arm to produce a change of deflection 3 mm of galvanometer determine sensitivity also find out the deflection factor so sensitivity is back uh, is what magnitude of output by magnitude of input now we see uh, the magnitude of output is 3 mm of galvanometer that means uh, there is a change of 3 mm in the deflection that is the output so 3 mm by uh, when when is the change of 3 mm galvanometer comes when there is a change in 7 ohms in the unknown arm of the Wheatstone bridge so the sensitivity sensitivity becomes 3 mm by 7 ohms which equals 0.429 mm per ohms and deflection factor or scale factor equals 1 by sensitivity that is uh, 7 ohm by 3 mm 3 mm so it equal, equals 2.3 ohms per mm sensitivity is the ratio of magnitude of the output signal to the input signal next is resolution which is also known as discrimination if input is slowly increased from non-zero input value it is found out that the output does not change until certain increment is exceeded smallest increment in input which can be detected with certainty is called resolution so uh, in a system sometimes when we increase the input there is immediately no change in the output after a definite value of input has increased only there is a change in output that smallest increment which in the input which changes the output by a uh, value that is called resolution so let us see any problem one problem a moving oil voltmeter has a uniform scale with 100 divisions. The FSV is, FSV means the full scale value, is 200 volts and 1 by 10 of scale can be estimate with, estimated with certainty. Determine resolution. So in this case, one scale division is what? 200 is the full scale value divided by 100 divisions. So one scale division will show 2 volts. Resolution has been set as 1 by 10 of the scale. So it will be 1 by 10 of 2 which is 0.2 volt. Now let us see what is the loading effect. In practical conditions, original signal gets distorted by introduction of measurement systems. Uh, like when we insert a, a meter for measuring current or uh, when we connect a voltmeter across the points where we have to measure voltage, it will create an effect. This distortion may be in the form of waveform distortion or phase shift or attenuation etc. So let us see first uh, case when we, have, we are connecting shunt elements shunt elements in the sense uh, for example voltmeter so there is a circuit uh, there where there is input voltage of e naught e naught is input voltage and uh, impedance is z naught we need to measure the voltage across the points a and b so we connect a voltmeter with impedance zl at the point a and b so the circuit becomes like this e naught z naught zl so if we see uh, we need we need to measure the voltage el actually we uh, the output uh, the measured value should be E0 but let us see what we get so EL uh, uh, from the circuit can be seen is equal to IL into ZL is also equal to E0 minus IL into Z0 EL equals E0 minus IL into Z0 is also equal to IL into Z0 ZL so E0 from these two equations we can see E0 equals IL into ZL plus Z0 so EL by E0 equals 1 by 1 plus z naught by z l so el actual voltage measured equals e naught by 1 plus z naught by z l in the ideal case what should be the uh, value or measured value should be also equal to e naught e but here if we see we get el equals e naught by 1 plus z naught by z l so if the what we say the impedance of the voltmeter z l is infinite in that case z naught by zl will be equal to zero z naught by zl will be equal to zero and in that case el becomes equal to e naught so to make the distortion minimum zl should be high as high as possible so, let us see one problem 
A multimeter having sensitivity 2000 ohms per, per volt is used to measure voltage of a circuit having output resistance 10 kilo ohm. Open circuit voltage of circuit is 6 volt. Find the reading of multimeter when it is set to 10 volt scale. Find percentage error. So, multimeter reading EL equals E0 by 1 plus Z0 by ZL which we uh, earlier found out, uh, we saw the derivation. So, in this uh, problem, it has been given that E0 equals 6 volt. E0 is open circuit voltage which is equal to 6 volt and also the um, circuit has having a, is having an output resistance of 10 kilo ohms. So, E0 has been given, Z0 has been given. Now, we have given multimeter sensitivity as 2000 ohms per volt. For 1 volt measurement, input resistance is 2000 ohms. Multimeter is now set to 10 volt scale. So, ZL of multimeter is equal to 2000 into 10 that is 20,000 ohms. So, EL becomes E0 by 1 plus Z0 by ZL which, equal, which equals 6 by 1 plus 10,000 by 20,000 which is equal to 4 volt. So, the output voltage uh, uh, open circuit voltage is 6 volt but the multimeter is measuring it as 4 volt so the error becomes 4 minus 6 by 6 into 100 uh, when we see the percentage error it, it, it becomes equal to minus 33 percent minus 33 is nothing it is showing less value it is 30, uh, the value shown is 33 percent less than the actual value now uh, we saw what is the loading effect due to shunt connected elements now let us see the loading effect of series connected elements series connected basically it will be an ammeter to measure current so we insert an ammeter in series with the circuit to measure the uh, current so this is the circuit which needs to be measured whose current needs to be measured so we insert an ammeter with an impedance ZL in series so when ammeter is connected initially I not uh, what is the value of I not I not is E not by Z not but when uh, ammeter is connected uh, I not is changed uh, let us term it as IL now IL becomes equal to uh, E not by uh, Z not plus Z L uh, which is equal to IL and uh, no, when we derive we, we will get IL equals I not by 1 plus Z L by Z not so so uh, in an ideal case where if an ammeter is inserted here and if we measure we should get the value I not I not but uh, since there is a impedance for a meter what we get is il which is which is i not by 1 plus zl by z not so what is an ideal case in this ideal case zl the uh, impedance of the ammeter should be zero if uh, we let us see if if it is zero what will be this term this term will become a zero so il becomes equal to i not so in a series connected element the connected element should have impedance very low that is practical case in ideal case it should be zero so now let us see some analog instruments analog device is one in which output or display is a continuous function of time and bears constant relation to input it is continuous function of time that is what uh, that is how analog instruments measure so they can be classified as indicating recording and integrating indicating means it will indicate the value of a quantity being measured like voltmeter will indicate the voltage of the circuit or uh, uh, current uh, ammeter will indicate current recording mm, recording means it continuously records over a specific specified period of time integrating means it will totalize it will measure in totalized events over a period of time it will integrate it will it may be summarizing or something like that we'll see examples as, as i said indicating instruments are a meter voltmeter power factor meter watt meter they are indicating the value of the voltage or uh, current or uh, power factor or power now recording instruments are like seismograph which measures uh, uh, earthquake i think ecg, ECG measure, measures the variation in heart uh, heart um, recording instruments are like seismograph ecg etc ecg uh, continuously monitor continuously monitor the waveform of heart like diastole and systole uh, all those things and seismograph uh, uh, um, monitors the earthquake wave vibrations and all those things integrating instruments are like energy meter odometer energy meter as we see it integrates power over time so that we get the energy which has been consumed similarly odometer calculates the distance it sums up speed over time so that we get the total distance which has been covered now normally torque in indicating instruments can be classified into three types reflecting torque controlling torque and damping torque Deflecting torque, it is responsible for the required deflection of the pointer. Deflecting torque can be produced by making use of one of the magnetic, heating, chemical, electrostatic and electromagnetic induction effects of current or voltage. 
Now controlling torque. Without controlling torque, what will happen? Pointer which points the um, value will swing to maximum irrespective of the size of current because of inertia. Now controlling torque can be produced by two methods: gravity control, which is right now obsolete, and spring spring control. Gravity control in that the controlling torque is proportional to sine of the deflection angle, and in spring control it is directly proportional to the deflection angle. Now the third one is damping torque. Damping torque is necessary to avoid oscillations of the moving system about its final deflected position. Like if the voltage is 5 volt, uh, what will happen? The pointer will go to 5, and uh, because of the controlling torque, it will come down. It will go below 5. Again, it will go above F, uh, above 5 because of inertia, and like it will continue to oscillate around the value, around the measured value. So in order to damp that os oscillations or to avoid the oscillations, we require damping torque these can be produced uh, the damping torque can be produced by uh, various uh, methods like there are eddy current damping uh, air friction damping fluid friction dam damping electromagnetic damping all those things so now let us see what is analog ammeter and voltmeter so the principle which uh, analog ammeter and voltmeter use is deflection uh, deflecting property of the electric current i mean it will produce whenever a coil is placed in this uh, magnetic field current carrying coil is placed in a magnetic field it will produce a torque that property is being used by ammeter and voltmeter so ammeters are connected in series with circuit whose current needs to be measured in this case power loss is i square ra where ra is the resistance of ammeter and i is the current which is being measured so ammeter should have a low resistance so that the power loss is less also a very small voltage drop is uh, comes across the ammeter so ammeter should have low resistance as we had seen it should be zero I in ideal case since it is a series connected element and in voltmeter voltmeter is connected in parallel with the circuit so power is v square by rv where rv is the resistance of the voltmeter so to reduce power lo power loss rv should be high in ideal case it should have it should be infinite but in practical cases it will be having voltmeters uh, which is a shunt connected element will have high resistance now these are the different types of meters used for measurement pmmc permanent magnet moving coil instruments which are used for measuring dc mi moving iron instruments which are used for measuring both ac and dc dynamometer type instruments electrostatic uh, measuring instruments thermal measuring instruments rectifier type measuring instruments all these four measure both ac and dc also there is an induction type measuring instruments which measures only ac so let us see about moving coil instruments permanent magnet moving coil instruments in PMMC instruments, a coil is placed between pole pieces of permanent magnet, uh, and this coil deflects due to current passed through the coil. Now, uh, in PMMC instruments, torque is uh, deflecting torque. TD is proportional to B I N A, where B is the strength of the magnetic field, I is the current flowing, N is the number of turns of the coil, and A is the cross-sectional area of the coil. And current uh, controlling torque T C equals S into theta, where S is the constant torque constant, and theta is the deflection angle. So in steady state that is when the needle points at a, a value uh, points at a value at that value td tor deflecting torque equals controlling torque that is b i n a equals s into theta so deflection of the pointer is proportional to what the current theta is proportional to i since theta is proportional to i directly proportional to i uh, PMM, pmmc instruments will have linear scale and PMMC instruments uh, use damping, uh, da uh, damping torque is produced in PMMC instruments using eddy current damping. So this is PMMC instruments uh, have deflection directly proportional to current, linear they will have linear scale and they are used to measure DC. In PMMC instruments there will be no uh, effect of stray magnetic field since uh, there is a unidirectional field which is being produ produced by the permanent magnet. But the disadvantage of PMMC is that it cannot be used for measuring AC voltage or current or AC measurements cannot be done using PMMC instruments and they are costlier than moving in and uh, there is an issue of aging of spring which is used for control producing controlling torque and magnet, uh, magnet can also cause error. Aging of magnet can also cause error. So let us see moving iron instruments. Moving iron uh, instruments depend on the movement of a piece of soft iron in the field of coil produced by the current to be measured. In moving iron instruments, deflecting torque D TD equals half I square dl by d theta, which is also proportional to Kc into theta. So in this case, theta is proportional to I square. That is theta, uh, the deflection is proportional to square of the current. So the scale of a, a moving iron instrument will not be linear. It will be 
non-linear and uh, the advantage of moving an instrument is that it can be used to measure both AC and DC and it is cheap compared to PMMC. So uh, in uh, moving coil instruments, PMMC instruments, theta is proportional to directly proportional to current whereas in moving ion instruments, theta is proportional to square of the current. There are certain disadvantages of PM, um, uh, sorry, moving ion in instruments. They have error due to stray magnetic fields since the magnetic field produced by this field is uh, not strong as strong as not as strong as uh, PMMC instruments. Also there will be error due to frequency variation and waveform changes. So there is another type of instrument called electrostatic instruments. All electrostatic instruments are voltage measuring devices. Torque develop uh, TD is produced by electrostatic field on charged conductor. All other measuring instruments are operated by current whereas electrostatic instruments uh, depend on voltage and in electrostatic instruments uh, deflection torque TD is proportional to VRMS square. Let us see one problem. A PMMC uh, has coil of dimension 15 mm into 12 mm. Flux density is 1.8 into 10 raised to minus 3 Weber per meter square. Spring constant K equals 0.14 into 10 raised to minus 5 Newton meter. Determine number of turns to produce deflection of 90 degree when 5 milliampere current passes through it. So at equil equ equilibrium deflection torque equals controlling torque that is TD equals TC. Now in this case deflection is 90 degree that is pi by 2 and uh, so uh, when we equate both the deflecting torque and control torque B i n a equals k theta n becomes equal to k theta by B i a. So in this case k equals 0 0.14 10 raised to minus uh, uh, sorry it's 10 raised to minus 6 uh, theta is pi by 2 and uh, B is 1.8 into 10 raised to minus 3 i is 5 milliampere which is 5 into 10 raised to minus 3 and area is 15 into 10 raised to minus 3 into 12 into 10 raised to minus 3. So we get the number of turns required to produce deflection of 90 degree when 5 milliampere current passes is uh, as 136. This is basically equating deflecting torque to the controlling torque. Now let us see extension of instrument ranges. Uh, ammeter shunts. The coil winding of basic moment meter is small and light and can ca carry very small current since the construction of an accurate instrument with moving coil to carry current greater than 100 milliampere is not practical because of bulky and large coil. Nothing but the ammeters which we use have a limited range. So there are cases when we have to measure very large value values of current. So in that case, uh, in one case what we will do is we will use current transformers. Also um, we can also do another thing. We can extend the range of the ammeter to a higher value not much still we can extend so how do we do that we are we do that by connecting a shunt shunt means it's a resistance of very small value parallel to the ammeter so when heavy current needs to be measured major part of it is bypassed through a low resistance called shunt so in this figure if we see this is actually the ammeter which is having uh, having a resistance of rm so we have to measure a current i which is very much higher than uh, the normal current rating of this uh, the, uh, of this ammeter. So what we do is we connect a shunt across the ammeter so that the major portion of this current I will pass through it. Using circuit analysis we can find that RSH equals Rm by M minus 1. Rm by M minus 1 where RSH is the value of the shunt resistance which needs to be connected across the ammeter and Rm is the uh, value of uh, ammeter uh, impedance. Uh, also M is I by Im which is the multiplying factor i by i m i is the current which needs to be measured i m is the rated current of the ammeter so r such equals r m by m minus 1 let us see one problem uh, a 0 to 1 milliampere meter this is an ammeter which can measure up to 1 milliamps so uh, movement with internal resistance of under ohm is to be converted into 0 to 100 milliampere ammeter so we need to convert a uh, ammeter which can measure up to 1 milliampere to an ammeter which can measure up to 100 milliamp. So they are asking to find out the resistance, shunt resistance which needs to be connected across the ammeter. So as we, uh, we found out, uh, we saw previously RSH equals shunt value of shunt resistance equals Rm by M minus 1. Where Rm has already, already, be given as under, already given as 100 ohms, we have to find out M. 
m is the current which needs to be measured and i m is the original weighted uh, uh, maximum current which can be measured by ammeter so i equals 100 milliamps uh, amps and i m equals 1 milliamps so m equals 100 so rs rsh is 100 by 100 minus 1 which uh, is approximately equal to 1.01 .01 ohms so we need to connect a uh, shunt resistance of 1.01 ohms across the 0 to 1 milliampere ammeter to use it to measure a current up to 100 milliamps now uh, this is a, a, a diagram of a multi range ammeter it is uh, nothing but uh, we are uh, using a <coughs> range switch so that we can select the value of shunt resistance different values of shunt resistance so that we can change the range of this ammeter to different values so ammeter shunt, uh, shunt resistance one of the important thing about ammeter shunt is shunt resistance is always less than the meter resistance also manganin is the material which is used to pre prepare decisions now there is a thing called swamping resistance which is connected in series with the meter and it's prepared with the same material as that of the shunt swamping resistance is connected in series with the meter and prepared with the same material as that of shunt what is the purpose of swamping resistance it is connected so that uh, the error in the measurement due to temperature variation is minimized swamping resistance is connected to minimize the error due to temperature variation now similarly now we saw uh, we saw how to extend the range of ammeter uh, we can also extend the range of voltage uh, use uh, voltage multipliers for that now there are high these are high resistance connected in series with basic voltmeter to increase the voltage measuring capacity so if you see in this circuit this is the actual voltmeter which is having a uh, impedance or resistance of rm now to extend its range we are connecting a resistance in series so that higher voltages can be measured using this voltmeter in this case m equals capital v by small v where, where capital v is the extended range which we need to measure and small v is the original range of a uh, maximum range of the voltmeter capital v by by small v and rsc equals rm into m minus 1 where m is this capital v by small v small v and rm is the um, resistance of the voltmeter let us see one problem a moving coil instrument gives full scale deflection of 10 milliamps when the potential difference across the terminals is 100 millivolt calculate shunt resistance for full scale deflection of 100 amps also series resistance for full scale rating of 1000 volt so it has been given that meter current im equals 10 milliamps full scale deflection is 10 milliamps now the potential difference rm i into im equals 100 millivolt across the terminal it is 100 millivolt so rm into im is 100 millivolt we know im so we will get rm as 10 ohms that means uh, the resistance is original resistance is 10 ohms now we need to find out what is the shunt resistance which needs to be connected so that we can measure a current of 100 amps so the multiplying factor is m which is equal to i by im which is 100 by 10 into 10 raise to minus 3 10 into 10 raise to minus 3 why because it can measure only 10 milliamps so we need to measure 100 amps uh, it can measure only 10 milliamps so 100 by 10 milliamps which is equal to 10000 now rsh equals rm by m minus 1 or rm we have found out as 10 ohms so it will be 10 by 10000 minus 1 which is approximately equal to, equal to 0 .01, 0 0 0 0.001 ohms so we need to connect a resistance shunt resistance of 0 0 0.001 ohm across the meter so that it can measure a current up to 100 amps similarly voltage multiplying factor is we need to measure a voltage of 1000 volt we need to measure a voltage of 1000 volt uh, when it can measure only 100 millivolt so the multiplication factor becomes v by v which is 10000 in this case rse equals rm into m minus 1 rm is we had find out it as 10 ohms so 10 into 10000 minus 1 which are approximately equal to 1 lakh ohms so similarly uh, we can also use multi range voltmeter voltmeters which uh, have a, a, a switch to select different values of resistance so that the range of the voltmeter can be changed accordingly with this uh, let us conclude this lecture i'll be coming up with more uh, lectures so this was the um, practice questions which was given in lecture one i have given the answers of all these uh, all the three questions uh, if you have any doubt regarding these uh, uh, to how to get to these answers you can comment below the video i will get back to you
um, and here are some practice questions from this lecture uh, kindly try it um, and thanks for watching if you like this video press the share and subscribe button more videos are in pipeline thank you